Hey, hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions help out the channel a lot, Lee. Uh, welcome back to the channel. It's going to be a very bumpy news day today. And without further ado, let's jump right into it, for those of you who are not looking at the screen, it says Federal Reserve hikes a rate by 0.5%, signaling a rate hike to 5.1% next year. So remember how like we were talking for a long time that at some point the Federal Reserve uh, would have to slow down with their rate hikes because they cannot raise them forever. It's mathematically impossible unless they're trying to obliterate the entire world's economy more than they already have. So instead of raising interest rates by 0.75%, as they've been doing the course of this year, they did 0.50, which is what everybody was waiting for. The U.S. Central Bank's Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC, convened on Wednesday and raised the federal funds rate by 50 basis points. The 0.5 percentage point rise follows the four consecutive three quarters of a point increase codified during the last few months. The FOMC's rate hike follows the recent U.S. inflation report, which indicated that consumer prices fell to 7.1% of inflation, which was lower than expectations, which is Still extremely high, but it's lower than the 8%, the 9%, and the near 11% that we had before. Following the Consumer Price Index result published on Tuesday, members of the U.S. Federal Reserve met on Wednesday and announced a 50 basis point rate hike. The December increase is smaller than the last three quarters of 75 basis points. The committee, they said, seeks to achieve maximum employment and... In <laughs> okay, sure and inflation at the rate of 2% over the long run. In support of these goals, the committee decided to raise the target range from the federal funds rate to 4 to 1 fourth to 4 4.5%. The Fed is projecting an additional 75% basis hike in the Federal Reserve by the end of next year. So that is meaning that over the course of 2023, the entirety they're expecting to raise the interest rates by another 0.75 across the year. So the expectations are that by January, February, they may raise it by another 50 points, 0.5%. And then also maybe sometime in spring, which is the other, which is the one that we're waiting for, is meant to be the, the lowest so that we get just a smidge above 5%. Uh, for the uh, inflation point rate market thingy. So remember how like everyone was like going crazy for these numbers and everyone was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to happen because it's going to be like the best thing in the entire world. Well, guess what? It was. Prices actually ended up skyrocketing and everyone was going completely insane. And then, and then for some reason, um, prices collapsed. So for those of you who aren't looking at the screen, uh, don't look because it's just absolutely terrible. Here's the exact moment when we got the news that we've all been waiting for, that they weren't going to be raising interest rates as aggressively as they had been doing in the past. And then prices went, whoa, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It's finally happening. The market's going to finally make sense. And then out of nowhere, um, stocks collapsed, not fell they collapsed into themselves like a, 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 a neutron star. I don't know if they collapsed, but it's, it sounds correct. And everything else began to collapse with it. It's a nearly a straight line completely down. So the, the saving grace that we believed would save us or that market analysts have been predicting for a while uh, that should have put an end to all this nonsense uh, for some reason rattled the stock market. There were so many uh, articles within the cryptocurrency space 
talking about like why did this coin fall? Why did this one? I, and 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 I saw so many of them. I I get it. You know, reality is hard sometimes, and not everybody wants to live inside of it. There's so many cryptocurrency articles that were like Litecoin falls to the bears. Solana's not doing well. Could it recover once it has a, a, fi- a database and all this other really weird stuff? And it's like, for those of you who do pay attention to the real world, I golf clap for you. Uh, this is the stock market. And it's really weird. Exactly at 18, things went up, at least on this chart. It says 18 right here. And then at 19 o'clock, that is, uh, prices began to tumble. Um... However, the amount of optimism has not left many in the cryptocurrency space. The amount of price predictions today were absolutely insane and talking about where Bitcoin's going to go, how high Bitcoin can go, where Bitcoin might be, where Bitcoin could possibly possibly be by the end of this year and all that other kind of stuff. So we now have indications Uh, that the Fed is going to slow down their rate hikes. Uh, We know that this is what the stock market wanted. And if the stock market reacts positively to it, then therefore uh, the cryptocurrency space does the exact same thing as well. Is this also one of them? Yeah, it says top crypto analyst predicts Bitcoin turnaround. After the second longest Bitcoin bear market, here's the timeline. It's 2023. I read through the article. The, the idea is 2023. He doesn't give a date. He doesn't give a time. He doesn't give a minute. He gives nothing. He simply says over the course of 2023, because it is the year before the halving, he believes that the market will turn back around based on the optimism that Bitcoin is once again going to have another reward halving. And that optimism for Bitcoin will cause the rest of the markets to also, that is to say the crypto markets, to also rise as well. Uh, And on top of that, you know, no real surprise here. Uh, The stock market fell. It says stocks sink after Fed hikes Powell gives hawkish outlook. They reannounced that they are still hawkish, uh, that they are going to be trying their darndest to lower inflation even more because 7% is absolutely out of control. And therefore, maybe that was the the scary part for everyone, the fact that inflation's still high and they're still going to try and do what they planned on doing since the beginning of the year. I'm not really certain. That's all the price news. So at least we know that in the event of the rate hike lowering going up, that we can still go up in price for at least an hour before collapsing because of the stock market. I'm trying to find a silver lining. It's somewhere in there. I, I, I just mentally can't see it. That's all the price news. And yeah, let's move on. So the news today is pretty odd and you'll see why because it's it's crypto. During a recent podcast appearance, Shahaf Bar Geffen, Chief Technology Officer at blockchain-based Koti, that is C-O-T-I network, Kati, I'll say Koti, said that DeJed, or Jed, a Cardano-based algorithmic stablecoin, <clears throat> would be launched soon. Bar Geffen initially announced that the algorithmically backed stablecoin would be launched in January 2023 at the Cardano Summit last month. Uh, so you you think I'm joking, but that's the Cardano news. Uh, one of the more popular pieces that was floating around was that Cardano's um, algorithmic-based stablecoin is going to be launching soon. Um, and that made people happy. So that's the Cardano news. Fantastic. Can't wait to get a stable coin that I won't be using ever. Also in the news, Russia's largest social network, Vkontakte, it's the letter V and then contact, but not with C's, it's with K's, and then there's an E at the end, Vkontakte, has launched a feature allowing users to upload digital collectibles to their platform. Account holders will also be able to buy and sell them in the future. Wow! As the company intends to establish a marketplace for NFTs. 
Uh, that was the uh, Russian uh, social media giant V Contacta is launching an NFT service news. I told you the news was going to get weird. Hold on to your horses and your shorts because it's it's not done yet. Also in the news, um, this is not crypto news, but it has to do with musky. So everyone is obsessed with muskrat, as it were. Uh, it says Tesla stock continues to dip as Elon Musk sells $3.58 billion worth of shares. Uh, there's not a lot of Elon Musk news like there was before. I, if, if you missed the news about four days ago, uh, Elon Musk is no longer the richest person on the planet. And I think that made a lot of his, his people very sad. So there's barely been any Elon Musk news, which is quite surprising because, you know, he's the greatest human being on the planet. So I just assumed that he'd kind of be everywhere. So the news is, is that um, for those of you who missed it, he's no longer the richest person on the planet because of his uh, severe level of debts and um, mainly Twitter and Tesla and a bunch of other things. So he's trying to sell it off to basically pay off his debtors, debt, debt, debtees, the, the people he, he, owe, he owes money to. They, they, they've, they've come a knocking. So once again, not crypto news, but this was quite prominent in the cryptocurrency news space because um, that's how the news works now in crypto. It just usually revolves around Elon Musk, but we haven't heard about him. So uh, heaven, he he heaven help us when he becomes the richest person in, on the planet again, because, you know, also in the news, is this also one? Um, I think so. Yeah. Also, in news that people apparently care about, financial services platform B. Riley, that is the letter B and then Riley, has offered Bitcoin mining company Core Scientific $72 million in financing to avoid bankruptcy and preserve value for Core Scientific stakeholders. B. Riley, a top lender to Core Scientific with $42 million in loans, currently outstanding, outlined the terms of the financing agreement in a 14th of December letter, noting it's prepared to fund the first $40 million immediately with zero contingencies. So how do I put this into words in English? I'm always quite confused when companies end up launching or have been through the cryptocurrency space and its cycles multiple times how people never see ever, never, ever, ever uh, seem to anticipate a bear market. Uh, prices do not go up forever and they will eventually fall. I find it, I, I've heard of Core Scientific for a number of years now. I feel like, doesn't it seem weird that you as a cryptocurrency Bitcoin mining company would not anticipate that prices would go lower and therefore it would not be as profitable to you to be able to mine Bitcoin to maybe scale back your company as opposed to getting further in debt to be able to mine the Bitcoin that probably isn't as profitable as it could be? Why do so many companies never expect a bear market? or things to go down, especially over the course of a year. We've been through uh, Bitcoin going down for a year and a half before. But for some reason, this time apparently is different because, you know, time? I, I don't know. So this was also in the news. Sure, why not? So for those of you who didn't get the hint, um, that was all the news of the day. Yep, once again, that was all the news. And it was really weird, and that's why I made sure that I showed it to you as well, because I wanted you to see exactly how weird all the news was. So we got Cardano is having a stable coin soon. Uh, v Contacta now has added NFTs. Uh, Elon Musk sold off stock. And Core Scientific um, is getting more money to avoid bankruptcy. So yeah, that was all the actual, uh, and I air quote here, real news of the day. Because you know why, why, why. It's time for the never-ending story, story, story. That's right, everyone. The story that just won't end, and this episode is filled with tons of people who are looking for attention in any possible way that they can. That's right. So, the first, for those of you who aren't looking at the screen, it says the first reported instance of whistleblowing at FTX. Ooh. And it says, it's not surprising. 
The former co-CEO of FTX Digital Markets, Ryan Salame, it is S-A-L-A-M-E, okay, apparently tipped off the Securities Commission of the Bahamas on the 9th of November that FTX was transferring customer funds to its sister trading firm, Alameda Research. What? Salame also told the Securities Commission that only three people named formerly FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX co-founder Xi Xiao, Gary Wang, and FTX director of engineering Nishad Singh had the required information to transfer customer funds from the crypto exchange to the hedge fund. One, none of this is confirmed. Two, none of this has been substantiated. Three, this news... I. I put up four fingers. Look at me. This news is being pushed around that there apparently was a whistleblower. Ooh, someone who knew in the very beginning that all this was going on, but didn't tell anyone. Also, the timing is very weird because this came after Chang Ping Cao was the one to whistleblow and announce everything from the very beginning. I bet everyone forgot about that. You probably shouldn't. For those of you who missed that five and a half something weeks ago, the entire reason, or rather, one of the main reasons why anyone knew about anything that was actually happening with FTX is because Chang Peng Sao found out that Sam Bankman Fried had donated money to a politician that he did not like and announced openly on Twitter, we're no longer helping anyone who bets against the cryptocurrency space. Everyone forgot about that? Right. So a lot of people, for some reason, in today are openly coming out, making sure that they're part of the documentary. You, none of you should have missed that. They're, they're making, I think, two or three documentaries right now about the FTX collapse. But one of the really important things, if you want to be popular and have people know who you are, is you have to say really weird things out loud so that everyone knows that you knew or that you were trying to help other people even though you didn't actually end up doing so. Because you have to have these like sound bites and you have to be on TV and the news so that when they make the documentary... They can say, hey, can we use one of your sound bites or can we actually have you on so that people know, wow, that guy's a good guy. And, you know, just really crazy that he was working with them for a number of years, but he just happened to now say something after the entire thing began to collapse as opposed to, you know, a year or two before. Anybody paying attention? Still? Right. Top FTX group executive tipped off Bahamas authorities about co commingling of funds in November. Wow, that's crazy. That's almost like that happened after Chang Peng Tao told everyone that something was wrong with FTX. I'm, I'm sure there's no coincidence there that this happened after. Right. That's the top executive news. Also, Alameda. Whoa, that's a big word. Had a secret Korean account exposed masking liabilities. So for those of you who don't know how human beings work, humans like secrets. What? That's crazy. And apparently the news is that Alameda and FTX allegedly uh, had an account um, on GitHub, apparently, where they were talking amongst themselves. And apparently one of the things that they were talking about was their liabilities, the debts that they were in. And yeah, that that's the news. So if you've never worked for a company or never had a group of friends... Um, even like a group of friends within a group of friends, you tend to have your own private uh, messaging accounts or your own things because, you know, it's that, that group of friends and then that group of friends. But also as a company, you have these things because you don't want the other employees or anyone else working to know because that's what makes it a, a secret account. So apparently people found their secret GitHub where they were talking about their liabilities and the, and the debts that they owed. You know that every company does that, right? You know, JP Morgan Chase probably has about a good, you know, a messaging app or platform or a, a thread between like the top 15 people who talk amongst themselves about like things that are happening within the company. And it's usually them talking about their liabilities and are masking their liabilities because it's not for the rest of the... Right, so... This was also in the news. You know, anything shady only comes from FTX because it's the it's the, the the scariest, shadiest thing that we've ever had on, on the planet. Also, in ooh, ooh, me over here. I I I, I really really want to be in the documentary. An FTX former wait, an, a former ex staffer at FTX has recently spoken about the extravagant expenditures and cult like worship of Sam Bankman Fried. So this person who worked for FTX, I think she only worked there for a week. 
like a literal week, not like nine weeks. I think it was a literal week. Uh, she announced that when she was working there, she was kind of shocked at how much money that they were spending, all the stuff that they were doing and how much money was going out every single day. She couldn't believe it. I'm going to be as nice as possible. I read through what she was saying. I'm going to assume that this is her first time ever working at a big company. That's not me being mean or rude. It's simply being me. If have you ever has anyone ever worked for a startup or seen a startup or seen any tech company? You know most of these companies have parties like every Friday and usually once a month they actually they'll charter boats and they'll go to castles and like you think I'm joking but I'm actually not. This is how big companies actually work. So the a lot of times, one of the, especially if you've ever, uh, I, anyway, other major companies and major auditing firms do the exact same thing. The you, You've heard the phrase, uh, work hard, party harder, or something similar to that. This is really what they do. They know that they're worth billions of dollars. So they have, they, ex, they spend extravagantly to actually appease the people who are working for them. Nobody wants to work for a boring, low down company. You want to know that at the end of the week, it was hard working, but Friday there's going to be a party. You know that the last three weeks were kind of difficult, but you guys are going on a boat overnight somewhere or you're being taken to another country. That's how these companies always end up working. And the actual like um, cult, if you will, like behavior of worshiping Sam Bankman Freed, that's also how every single other tech company works. I think a lot of people, once again, um, have maybe, and it's understandable, why would you have been, uh, have never been in these circles before. If you, if you dabble, you, if you dabble in any kind of cryptocurrency related circles, you know that it gets a bit intense sometimes the way that, you know, there's a reason why they're called Bitcoin maximalists. It's because they believe a very specific kind of thing, and in essence, these people do worship Bitcoin. You may not, uh, uh, what's the word? And it's not even agree with me. You may not say it openly, but it's basically what it is. You've seen the people fighting online. None of these people created Bitcoin. They own fragments of Bitcoin, but they fight each other on social media as if they created Ethereum, as if they were the ones who hit the button who made XRP, as if you know Satoshi Nakamoto comes to them in their dreams and told them that they are the neo of the cryptocurrency space. That's just how these companies are. But you got to have these really crazy um, things said if you want to make it into the documentary. So somebody who was working there for a week was talking about how much money they were spending and how much people were worshiping Sam Bankman Freed. Look into other tech companies. Tesla. Yeah, that one. Uh-huh. Look into other tech companies and look at what former employees of those companies have also said about working there. It's the exact same thing that this person said. It's always the same. You usually only get hired if you show like a, a dramatic amount of intent of uh, worship for said figure. That's how you get hired. So that was also in uh, going to be in the documentary news. In um, the only real news of the day that I believe 99% of people are going to ignore because it's not as um, hot or spicy or um, amazing as the other news that's out there because this one you can't really blame the person who you've been blaming. The collapse of the crypto exchange FTX was not the most impactful event for crypto investors this year at least from a market-wide perspective. That award is shared by the depegging of Terra's algorithmic stablecoin and the consequent collapses of crypto lender Celsius and hedge fund Three Arrows Capital. Do you remember two weeks into the, the beginning of the collapse of FTX? What did I keep saying over and over? Why is everyone freaking out about this? This isn't that big. Yeah, okay, like we get that he did something bad and it should be big news, but... People in the crypto space have lost a lot more money before. Does anyone remember that? And, and people once again were screaming at me in the comment section, telling me that this was the worst thing that's ever happened to the cryptocurrency space. You know, part of the problem is, is I've been into crypto for, I mean, I've had this channel for, I, I think it's almost seven years at this point. I Wait, is it? 
Six years, six, six, some, somewhere around there, almost six, seven years. I don't know the exact number, but it's been a very long time. I've seen it all. I go over news every single day. You can't tell me that I didn't see something that I found online that I researched to see if it was actual news and then I put into this video. The, the entire FTX thing, while dramatic, uh, wasn't really that crazy. We've heard, and even if you just look at it from the perspective of before 2022, we've had a lot worse things happening within the cryptocurrency space. Now, here's the kicker here. I think, no, I know, the only reason why people have blown this out of proportion is because people found out that Sam Bankman-Fried was a Democrat. Oh, I said it out loud. Yeah, that's that's the only reason. The other companies uh, basically usually didn't have such a, a large face to them. Uh, like FTX did with Sam Bankman Freed. But the other things that also collapsed even just this year were far, far worse than FTX. Guess how? Tether's UST depegging and ultimately collapsing in May. Contagion stemming from the collapse, that is Terra's collapse, then contributed to Celsius filing for bankruptcy and the implosion of three arrows capital in July. Remember, I keep saying over and over, has everyone forgotten about Do Kwan? Remember when he, like, he is actually the reason for billions of dollars actually collapsing within the cryptocurrency space. Remember three days ago, for those of you who missed it, Do Kwan came out and basically uh, blamed Sam Bankman Freed for the collapse of Terra and the collapse of Celsius and the collapse of three arrows capital trying to deflect from himself, Do Kwan, that he's the person who did it and is allegedly still in hiding. FTX later experienced a liquidity crunch after allegedly misusing customer funds and filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in November. Former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried has since been arrested in the Bahamas and charged with fraud. According to crypto analytics firm Chainalysis, UST, that is Tether's coin, collapse caused $20.5 billion, that is billion with a B, in losses for investors. Meanwhile, the failure of Celsius and Three Arrows Capital caused $33 billion in losses. FTX's collapse caused only $9 billion in realized losses. I know and you know. Don't lie to yourself. We all know the reason why everyone's coming down so hard on Sam Bankman-Fried, why everyone thinks he's the devil, why we keep having uh, the never-ending story portion of this news, why this has been going on for five weeks. Do you remember, I remember, when Terra collapsed and the coin depegged and people woke up and they saw that their $29 million was 14 and a half cents because the coin had completely collapsed. That was, that was actually one of the largest, one of the largest instances of a collapse within the cryptocurrency space that caused everything else to also begin to collapse with it. I remember having videos being like, why is everyone selling off their Bitcoin? This has nothing to do with Bitcoin. Why is Ethereum's price going lower? We have the merge coming up. Why is everyone selling because Terra Luna collapsed? It didn't make any sense and still doesn't make any sense now. The FTX collapse was one of the craziest things as well. And this is, and this is I remember years ago when we had Chainalysis and Santiment first launch, I was like, why, why do we need companies like this? And now, cool, thank you for the information. Once again, people are not gonna pay attention to this because it's not, it's not attractive enough. People need to be able to scream at someone, especially for their losses. If you have a relatively faceless company like Celsius, like Three Arrows Capital, like Genesis, which also collapsed as well, you need to be able to point the finger at someone. And since people really don't know where Do Kwan is, you can't really point the finger at him. People know where FTX, uh, where, where Sam Bankman Freed is or was and where he currently is now. So now that you've seen the numbers, Will you now point the finger 
at Do Kwon because he is the he's the reason for around fifty five billion dollars worth of collapses this year. Nah, you're probably still going to blame Sam Bankman Fried for everything because it, it's just a lot easier to blame to blame someone else. Yeah, so that's the uh, FTX collapse was terrible, but we've seen worse news. All right, let's continue with the never-ending story. Also in the news, Alameda tried to redeem 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin days before the bankruptcy. This was said by the BitGo CEO. The CEO of BitGo stated that Alameda respective a representative failed the security verification process required to convert wrapped Bitcoin into, into Bitcoin. One, sure, why not? It happens sometimes. If you are representative and you don't know the actual security code, maybe you fail doing it. Uh, two, uh, Alameda was probably unwrapping wrapped Bitcoin all the time. They're a company. Do you think that Binance has only unwrapped wrapped Bitcoin once? Or do you think they're probably doing it once a week? The point of me showing you all of this is because I want you to I, I want you to understand how obsessed people have become with this one topic. It means almost nothing to over 90% of you. If you lost money in this fiasco, I do apologize. I hope you get your I'm you know I'm not apologizing for them. I'm sorry that you lost money. I hope you get your money back in a timely manner, and I do sincerely hope as well that you stop following charlatans within the space, because people seem to love these kinds of people. It's the weirdest thing in the entire world. You can look at someone and know when they're slimy. You, you've seen people before. You've seen and heard people talk, and you go, that guy's a snake. You can tell by hearing them speak. Why everyone is pretending that this was the craziest thing in the entire world when it was not. Imagine. Remember a couple of days ago when we had news that the collapse of FTX was the same as the Lehman Brothers? Was the same as the collapse of the 2008-2009 financial markets? And then for me to show you on the screen information from Santiment that Terra Luna's collapse was literally five times worse, billion-wise, than FTX. Wouldn't that then make the Terra Luna collapse? The Lehman Brothers of the space? Or the equivalent to the 2008-2009 collapse? Doesn't it seem weird that everyone literally just lied again to get on TV to make sure to say that Sam Bankman-Fried was the... People kept on saying he was he he's a mad genius, that man. I've I've spoken to him before. He knew exactly what he the guy's a bumbling idiot. I'm sure there's some level of intelligence you need to be able to run a company like that or to be able to uh acquire billions of dollars, especially from arbitrage trade, trading like he said that he was doing in the early days of the company. I, I get it. He's not God. He is, he is not the highest authority in the cryptocurrency space. I'm sure Alameda, I'm sure Coinbase, I'm sure Kraken, I'm sure Binance, I'm sure they're unwrapping Bitcoin all the time. So imagine if, hear me out here. Let's say Binance is, is unwrapping Bitcoin. They do it on the 1st of the month, on the 7th of the month, on the 15th of the month, the 28th of the month, and then the 31st of the month as well what have you. And they do this subsequently over the course of, let's say, nine months, over and over and over and over and over. At some point in the end of November, Binance has a problem. Oh no, something's going wrong. Binance begins to collapse. Binance falls apart. And then we have an article that says, Binance tried to redeem 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin days before bankruptcy. Yeah, because they were probably just doing what they were always doing before. People keep trying to warp the news as to if these people were geniuses or trying to... No, they had billions of dollars in liquid cash. We knew this. We saw the information. I'm sure they did not need... What was that? $30, 30 million from, from their wrapped Bitcoin because we knew and heard and Sam Bankman-Fried also said 
they had $1.5 billion liquid. The reason they can no longer access it is because they filed for bankruptcy. Everyone forgot that? Yeah, remember when people were still able to take their money out of the exchange and then at some point they weren't? It's because he filed for bankruptcy and locked up all their assets. So anyway, if this happened before the bankruptcy, that means they were still liquid. So this isn't, this isn't really news. All right, that's the Alameda. Ooh, evil. So scary. Big words in, in sentence. Let's move on. Also, in very unpopular news, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says Kevin O'Leary told U.S. lawmakers that FTX failed because Binance intentionally struck it down. One, I think Kevin O'Leary is a literal snake. That's, that's just my personal opinion, having watched him on the on the telly and also um, just seeing him in the cryptocurrency space, how he keeps talking about uh, how crypto is the greatest thing in the entire world until something that he's had money in has collapsed, and then he screams at the top of the hills. Uh, but two, um, I believe him. Why? Because we went over that, in the, and I know someone just went... Oh my gosh. Nope. No, 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 no. That's because you you weren't here during that day. Remember when we got news that Changpeng Cao said that someone else was the one? You, I mean, it's all literally recorded. I make videos every day. Remember the video where we had news that Changpeng Cao, that's this fellow right here, said that he didn't have the information. The information came from some other person on Twitter. And then he left a link to when they said what they, you know, about the uh, something shady is going on at FTX. Something isn't right at FTX. Something is, is afoot at FTX. And then I was like, but wait, hold on. And I showed you Chang Peng Sao's tweets. And seven days before, Chang Peng Sao was the one who mentioned that something was wrong. Something's amiss. We will no longer be helping people who bet against us politically, and that he was the first one to mention anything. Because what happens is, for those of you who don't know, uh, apparently Binance had a 20% stake in FTX. What happened was and is, is that FTX was actually growing quite quickly, a lot larger and quicker than other crypto exchanges uh, had expected. If you own a portion of a company or if you own a portion of anything and you find out that something is wrong or their balance sheets are off, uh, the way that it works in business is you actually offer them money, you know, not without, you know, uh, an interest rate attached to it. But you say, hey, I'm looking at your order book. Something's kind of wrong. You are messing with my money. Uh, do something about it right now. Talk to us. Here's the money. Let's actually fix the patch. Do you remember when Chang Peng Sao went on a, 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 a Twitter rant and was talking about how terrible, blah, 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 all this other stuff. And then Sam Bankman Freed, for those of you who remember it, Sam Bankman Freed wrote on Twitter, okay, fine, you win. Doesn't that seem a bit odd for someone who's going through the collapse of their cryptocurrency exchange? Wouldn't it make a little bit more sense if something was said behind the scenes, like I'm going to destroy you, your exchange won't be larger than ours, stop what you're doing right now, okay, you win? That didn't ring a bell to anyone out there. So anyway, um, something happened behind the scenes that we may never uh, know about. Um, I have had a feeling personally, and also just from reading stuff online for a while, uh, that my opinion is that Binance probably had a hand in all of this and the actual collapse. Why, you might ask? Well, that's a silly question. Remember four days after um, FTX actually collapsed? Do you remember which exchange uh, made the most money? It's a really easy one. It starts with a B. Yeah, that one. Because all the people were transferring all their money from FTX over to Binance. Why? Because Changpeng Cao had become the, 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 the new poster child of um, crypto sincerity and telling people you know, this is the place to put your money. Binance is the safe spot. Doesn't that seem a little bit weird? No one? No one's catching on to any of this? That this keeps happening over and over? No one? All right. So this was very unpopular news. One, because it's Kevin O'Leary. 
Uh, and also, too, because I think people don't want to admit that something else is probably going on behind the scenes. It's a lot easier to admit or to tell yourself that Sam Bankman Freed was the mastermind behind, the, you know, behind all of this and that he's the only one responsible. It's, it's a lot easier to do that. Remember a couple of years ago, if you've been here for more than five years, we had a situation where any ANY, other cryptocurrency exchange that was uh, up and coming on the up and up, uh, for some reason, they were getting like subpoenaed or they were getting uh, in trouble by the CFTC and the SEC. It was so random and so weird. What's that other one? It wasn't, was it BitMEX? I don't remember. Mm, can't remember the name of it. It was Bit something, I think. It, it wasn't BitMEX. Anyway, um, there was a guy who was running the exchange and the exchange was getting really, really big, really fast. And then out of nowhere, uh, he got in trouble for like money laundering and all these other things. Um, I think he had to pay like a $20 million fine. And then all charges were dropped. But at that point, it had been around six months and his cryptocurrency exchange had collapsed. That's, that can't be a coincidence, right? Anyway, that's the least popular news story of the day. Once again, we'll probably never figure out exactly what happened or who said who to what, but you have to admit, this is all a little bit weird, uh, especially every single day, how much this news is being pushed about how, you know, insane and weird and intelligent Sam Bankman Freed was. Ooh, scary, scary, scary. All right. Let's move on. Also in scary news, FTX did not use encryption to store users' keys. This was said by the new CEO. During the time when Sam Bankman-Fried was in charge of FTX, the company had been storing private keys to cryptocurrency wallets without using encryption. How is that even possible? I feel like that's also probably a lie. How would you even know? It doesn't make any sense. As a result, hundreds of millions of dollars were susceptible to theft or other forms of criminal behavior. But they weren't. Try to think about it backwards. Imagine if someone came forward and said that you did something and then you were like, but I didn't. So the news is, once again, scary news, FTX allegedly did not use encryption to store their users' keys, uh, but nothing happened to those funds. So what's the point of announcing something like that? You can say anything about Sam Bankman fried at this point. You can say anything that you want about the guy. Yeah, when he was working here, he used to... He used to eat monkey toenails and, and throw bananas at people. Why he did it? I don't know. He was Sam Bankman Freed. I don't know why the guy had that voice, but that's just the voice that came out. So cool. They, they, they allegedly did not use encryption, which I find to be incredibly stupid. I don't think any exchange at all is not using encryption at this point because we had Mount Gox. It doesn't make any sense that you would have done that in any kind of way. Also in the news, Sam Bankman-Fried was a pathological liar. This was said by Representative Richie Torres from New York uh, as he discussed how the disgraced former CEO misled, this, uh, mis misled the public and what he did with Sam Bankman-Fried's $2,900 political donation. So for those of you who missed it, I think the number was $15 million. I don't know the exact number. It, it keeps changing all the time. Sam Bankman Freed, during the last election, I think the midterms, I think that's what it was, uh, apparently donated tons of, ooh, isn't that weird that, that this all happened around the time of the midterms? Huh. Huh. So the news is, is that Sam Bankman Freed apparently donated tons of money to politicians within America. There are a lot of people now in America who are trying to get answers or they're like angry that the politicians who receive their money from Sam Bankman Freed haven't come out to talk about them giving the money back or whatever the case might be. Also, if you've never lived in America, it actually doesn't work the inverse. So if Sam Bankman Freed had been a fraud and had given money to people in the in in the in the political sphere who sided with those people politically, no one would be asking for them to give any of their money back. That's not how American politics works at all. But now the people who he did allegedly donate to are now coming out to talk about how terribly horrific of a person he was and was a you know, pathological liar. I'm sure that's, you know, that's the that's just how scary things are at this point. So 
what he did with his $2,900 donation, I don't think you even have to um, say that in American politics. I think you are allowed to receive donations, and I, I don't think you have to disclose where they're from, and I don't think you have to disclose what you did with said money. Like, I don't, th I, I don't think that that's actually even a thing. So this guy is also, um, A, probably trying to save his hide because people figured out that he was working with the worst pathological liar in the entire world, but also... He wants that sound bite. How do you get into the documentary? You gotta stay. You got it. You gotta stay on course. You have to say stuff like this because that's how you become popular. And people go, "Wow, look at what a great guy he was." Can't believe, can't believe he did it. Also in the news, it says FTX mistake doesn't mean the industry will be falling apart. This was said by Carlisle's David Rubenstein. So everyone's now finally coming to the conclusion that FTX was not Bitcoin. Bitcoin was not FTX. Bitcoin's still been going slow and strong as long as it has been for the last almost 14 years at this point. And all the rich people, because you know what it is? The, the rich people who told, I, pay attention, pay attention. The rich people who told you to sell weeks ago that this was the worst, terrible, insanity thing that has ever happened within the cryptocurrency space they got you to sell off your coins. Remember all the news that we got as people were selling that whales were buying billions and billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano. Crazy, right? How that keeps happening every single cycle. And now all the billionaires, not saying this guy in particular, but you know, wink, uh, who told everyone to sell off their coins. Now they're saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. This may not be as bad as it seems. The cryptocurrency industry is still really strong. Guys, get back in the market. It's probably because they realized that they terrified the living heck out of so many people. This is why prices really aren't moving anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, that's how it always is. It happens all the time. You can look through my other videos. I'm telling you, look through them. If you, if you have that you know, uh, urge or desire in your heart to see if I'm lying, Go look at my other videos because it keeps happening all the time. Every time that something catastrophic happens, the rich people tell everyone to sell off their coins. This is the worst. This is terrible. Cri crypto never, ever coming back. This is the worst possible thing that could have ever potentially happened to anyone on this planet. And then at some point when, when, when they're full from eating, they then tell everyone else, oh, no, 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 no. The, 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 the water's safe now. Everyone get back in because they need prices to start pumping because they bought at a certain point where they believe that prices would bounce from there. But the prices ain't bouncing because they're still terrifying every single person on the planet. That's the FTX mistake. Doesn't mean the crypto industry will fall apart news. Weird, right? That's so, that's so crazy. Let's move on. Also in the news, the CFTC is going to be suing Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX, and Alameda over fraud charges. I don't know what else I'm supposed to be, be saying about that, but... Uh, sure. Why not? Go for it. Everyone is, is taking a poke at, at Sam Bankman Freed. So why not? Why not you CFTC? We never hear about this. The, the, the last we heard about the CFTC was that people in the United States don't like the SEC and they're trying to get the CFTC to take over the cryptocurrency space. So look at them regulating and doing something. That's cool. I wasn't, ex wasn't, ex I really wasn't expecting that one. So um, get her done, CFTC. That, that, that sounds amazing. Also in the news, um, this isn't really crypto news, but I guess kind of, so sure, why not? Uh, every single time that the stock market, every single time that the stock market has gone down, uh, Kathy Woods announces somewhere uh, that she's going to be buying more Coinbase stock. Uh, she and many other companies believe that Coinbase's stock is incredibly undervalued. I'm not sure what their metrics are or if they're even telling the truth. Maybe they're trying to get other people to buy it. So she bought $3.2 million worth of Coinbase stock uh, yes, yesterday. The latest purchase means that ARK Invest, um, now their e the ETF now has 5.8 million uh, Coinbase shares. So cool. I would wish them... Good luck or that the price goes back up, but these people are already, you know, b b bajillionaires, so they don't really need 
uh, my, my wishes to actually make more money because even if Coinbase's stock goes down even more, guess what? They're, they're still going to be making tons and tons of money because that's, that's how, how it always works. And uh, what's this one? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, Chung Peng Sao was also recently in the news saying that a lot of people uh, should not be self-custodying because um, they, they don't know how to do it. Not joking. It says only 1% of people can now handle crypto self-custody right now. This was said by the Binance CEO. Chung Peng Sao's com comments come as billions of dollars of stable coins continue to flow out of the Binance exchange. For those of you who missed it, about three days ago, Binance and Changping Tao are currently under investigation <clears throat> by the Department of Justice for money laundering, uh, tampering with sanctions, and what's the other one? Oh, working without a license for four years. That was the other. That was the other one. And I think within a day and a half, within a day and a half, I think uh, three point six billion dollars left Binance's exchange. So I assume. So one, I assume that a lot of those people either A, moved it to another crappier cryptocurrency exchange, or B, actually took the time to buy a ledger and self-custody. Um, but B or C, I forgot what letter I was on, uh, Chang Peng Sao probably said that people can't handle self-custody because they probably realized that people were taking money off of their cryptocurrency exchange and putting it onto ledgers or other cold hardware devices, and now they want that money back on their exchange. That's that's just how it works. You, if you lose three point six billion dollars in a day, you know, it's not good for business. So this was also floating around as well. Um, sure, why not? I I, I think the number is far higher than one percent. It's not that difficult. I own multiple ledgers. It's not like it's literally not rocket science. You plug it into your computer. You copy the address. You say send. You unplug the device and you hide it somewhere. That's that's usually all there is. So it's it's not, you know, it's like plugging in a USB and transferring your crypto onto it and then putting it somewhere and then that's how self-custody works. It's not it's not rocket science. That's the Chung Ping Sao. Says only 1% of people are smart enough to actually custody their own coins right now. Oh boy, <laughs> the photo the photo on the screen is of a black hole with with money being sucked into it with like these people, man, incredible. All right, let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. I hope you're all as terrified by the by the uh, Sam Bankman Freed news as as you're supposed to be. You're supposed to all be terrified right now because that's that's what Sam you know Sam Bankman Freed sitting sitting behind bars. You know the his ghost is still haunting us because of how how genius he is. On Crypto with Lionel, Tigera Machonisa, Bake Me a Cake, Anytime Fitness Monks, Corner Staff, Yes to Crypto, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Paxis Sexuna, Crypto Artist Coldy 3D, Bankroll Network, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Adam Graysick, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Nostroma, Moonman, High XRP, Utopia 569, Navarro Williams, Pattern Noster, Need a Miracle, Space Case, Troy, All Good, Quoted Biddy. Lauren De Silva, VB Nerd 21, Mobarazi, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay the Dealer's Den, Arachno Dave, Bitcoin Ben, Roman Geba, Empire Queen. And let's move on. Jamie Saad, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain. Crypto Gambino, Mandy Cryptos, Dotha Diddy, Sam Ratter, Bodie McBoatface, and Martin Stoyer. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who clicked the notification bell. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know if it makes a sound. I doubt it. Thank you to everyone who left a like or a comment at the moment, moment, moment. Bitcoin is currently at 17,669 US dollars. Here's the moment where it went up and then it goes wee all the way down. It is currently down by 0.87%. So not a lot, but still in red. Ethereum is down by three percentile points. Um, Binance Coin is down by three point five. I think everything is in red. Maybe one's in green. Chillas is up by two point six. Okay. Everything else is in red. Let's see where the rest of the week takes us. What's today's date? I thought it was Friday. Jeez Louise. I 
do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, liking, listening, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.